Hello and welcome to the Cryptocurrency News Channel. Today we're going to talk about why a project's adoption is the most important thing after the preliminaries are done. Obviously your blockchain actually needs to work and it has to have some security so it doesn't get hacked. But after that it's not about transactions per second, it's actually about adoption. Now there is a limit to that because if you're like Bitcoin or Ethereum and you can only process 7 transactions per second or 14 transactions per second, yeah then that is a problem and you're seeing that Bitcoin and Ethereum are running into trouble sometimes. But here's the thing about that. Let me repeat that. They are right running into problems sometimes. Um, Ethereum is really congested right now because of DeFi. But Ethereum is like one of the most used blockchains out there, especially with DeFi and with stablecoins. Almost all stablecoins run on Ethereum. Almost all DeFi runs on Ethereum. And just now, just now, they're only just now surpassing 14 transactions per second, which is making the cost of gas go up. Bitcoin um, basically only really did that once and that was in 2017 at the height of the bull run. The rest of the time, with only seven transactions per second, it runs just fine. The fees really aren't that high. They've only gotten astronomical once or twice. And Ethereum, I mean, it's astronomical right now because of the stable coins and DeFi, but it's also one of the slowest networks. And by like a factor of 100 compared to some of the new networks, some of the new networks can run very cheaply up to 1500 transactions per second. So take that into consideration before you brag that your project has 10,000 transactions per second, 20,000 transactions per second, 50,000 transactions per second, two gazillion transactions per second. The truth is no one gives a crap because um, generally a couple of hundred transactions per second is way more than anyone really needs right now because Bitcoin and Ethereum, despite having single and lower double digit transactions per second, they still can't, they've actually functioned quite well, basically up until now. And you're going to need capacity and that, and most coins capacity are dozens, if not hundreds of times more than Bitcoin or Ethereum's. And the thing is a lot of them are actually starting from scratch, which means they don't have the applications on it, which means they can actually build up the scalability and layer two solutions from the ground up, having full adoption of some of those layers two solutions, which can actually get into the hundreds of thousands of transactions per second. I mean, Visa doesn't even run that many transactions per second. I think Visa actually runs a couple of thousand transactions per second. I mean, that's the scale that you're talking about. If you have a couple of hundred or a couple of, hundred, a couple of thousand transactions per second, your server is not going to blow for many, many years. So that's why like the five digit, six digit transactions per second, they're completely meaningless um, without, without a real use case or partnerships. And that's where um, the adoption actually comes in. Adoption is obviously like one of the major factors. I mean, there's security as well. You don't want your uh, coin getting hacked, obviously. But adoption is generally the hardest one. There's a lot of coins because like all blockchain is open source, so you can build it off of other people's code, and it's not. And you can actually make it secure um, using one of the various cryptographic methods, and you can actually have it very scalability from the beginning by copying someone else's code, essentially. Um, but getting the partners. Is the hard thing just because there's a million uh, like 10,000 forks of Bitcoin doesn't mean anyone gives a crap about any of the 10,000 forks of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the main thing just because you forked XRP doesn't mean you actually have uh, the Ripple network and all the partners just because you forked VeChain does not mean you have all the partners of VeChain. Those are the things that are actually hard to come by. So for those of you fans of Digibyte, I mean like you guys, I know the technology is good. It can handle a lot of transactions per second. It might be secure, but there's no use case. And the thing is like, since uh, the leader, quote unquote, stepped down, it is decentralized. But the thing is, like, that makes it harder to ace partnerships with large corporations because large corporations want to talk to a leader. And that's like one of the reasons I'm actually not all about Digibyte, because even though the technology is pretty cool, no one really uses it. And if no one really uses it and there's no way for like a large corporation, well, there's very little way for a large corporation to have someone to talk to to sign a partnership or to use it. I just don't really know about the viability of the import of the um, project. And the same thing is this, this the thing is the same for a lot of these projects that you just you guys come onto my chat and mention. They're like, look at this project. It has 10,000 transactions per second. It's secure. It's even anonymous. And like, I'm just like, yeah, that's pretty cool. But in the back of my head, a lot of times I'm thinking like, but it's useless as well because no one actually uses it. Because let me tell you something. Almost anyone can make that. It's not very hard to have something that's like, you know, Three, four thousand, five thousand, even ten thousand transactions per second. Um, have it be a have it some kind of an anonymous feature onto it with a coin mixer or something. 
and uh, also like have some security onto it because you can literally fork someone else's coin that has the exact same features because it's all open source. So that does not impress me. Your technical, like it takes more than technical specs to actually impress me on a coin right now. I want to see partnerships with big industries I want, or I want to see several partnerships with smaller industries or I want to see you target an area where you're actually having talks because that's really what defines coins from other coins. Because like technologically, like Stellar and Ripple, they're basically the same technology. Um, you could say one's better than the other or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But technically, they're like 99% the same. Well, 95% the same thing. The thing that makes Ripple better than Stellar is that they have more partnerships and they actually have more alliances in the industry. I mean, like with VeChain and Origin Trail, like, yeah, sure, VeChain might be better or Origin Trail might be better. But the reason I like VeChain better is because it has a lot more partnerships and has more, a lot more representation within the industry. Same thing with, um, you know, the same thing why, you know, uh, companies like Cardano are having a hard, are going to have a hard time taking over Ethereum because Ethereum's already there. Now, I will say that crypto is not as entrenched as traditional markets. So it's not as hard to flip like Ethereum as it is to, fl to flip like Microsoft or something. And even with that, you know, when Microsoft was fairly entrenched, Apple did actually make a dent in the market, a big dent indeed. So it's definitely possible at this young age to actually flip a, a dominant coin, but it will become harder as time goes on. Now, Ethereum's got a problem where it just can't process the transactions and the cost will actually make people switch to other blockchains eventually. But the thing is like if a block, if your blockchain has three, 400, 500 transactions per second, that's enough for the foreseeable future. And especially if it has layer two solutions like all these chains actually do have, like with payment channels, uh, with like scaling solutions, um, with different like payment networks, you know, they, those can scale up to 20, 30,000 transactions per second or payments per second. And generally, you're not going to need that much for a long time. I mean, 20, 30,000 transactions per second. Do you know, guys, do you guys know how much that is? That is literally billions of transactions per day. You can process like you can process a huge amount of transactions using that. And no blockchain has that kind, those kind of usage statistics right now. So the thing is, like, once you hit maybe above like 100, 200 transactions per second, I'm no, I'm no longer really interested in how many transactions per second your project can actually uh, do. I'm also not that interested in how super secure your your project is because most good projects are very, very secure. Um, I'm also not. I'm, I'm a little in, interested in what investors are backing your project because they might actually have connections. Uh, they might actually have connections that can actually get those get you those partnerships. But I'm really like interested in what you're actually talk who you're actually talking to, and what documents and contracts you've actually signed because that actually gives me an idea of where you're going for the future. If you don't have any documents or contracts signed, regardless of how much your community loves your coin, regardless of how many transactions or staking you have, I'm not certain about its future, and I really wouldn't recommend it to other people. So that is the uh, news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe and hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.